Welcome to our first 2021 FAQ. I don't know if 2020 was good or bad for you, but I have hope that 2021 is, at the very least, going to be a little less strange. We start off this year with the question, should we read the Old Testament since we have the New Testament? This question came to me based on the idea that the Old Testament doesn't apply to us, and the person who asked this question heard someone they called a pastor say we should unhitch ourselves from the Old Testament because people don't understand it anyways. To be honest, this kind of gets me a little riled up and it concerns me. I debated about whether to just answer the question or to address this additional context as well. I'm really cautious about leaving room for healthy debate and frankly, we don't have to agree about everything to be brothers and sisters in Christ. It's okay to come to different conclusions on non-essential things. Even Paul, who wrote over a quarter of the New Testament, and Barnabas, who was described as a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith, they had a sharp disagreement so that they separated from each other. Now, amazingly, Barnabas was the primary person that led Paul to being accepted as the teacher in the church that he became. It wasn't like these guys weren't close or Paul couldn't trust Barnabas. You can read about that in the book of Acts if you're interested. Um, rabbit trail. Barnabas wanted to give a guy, John Mark, who had royally messed up in all fairness. He wanted to give this guy a second chance. Paul says no, wouldn't hear of it. Frankly, given what Barnabas did for Paul to help him be accepted into the early church, Paul really should have expected nothing less from Barnabas and was probably being a little hypocritical. You know, even Paul wasn't perfect and, and he knew it. He said the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. Anyway, off the rabbit trail. I decided that I need to address that context because I think it's that important. James 3, 1 and 2 says, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle his whole body. This this should be a very sobering idea for anyone who teaches. Paul said someone who is a pastor is also someone who must be able to teach. And it was important enough that he repeated that in three separate letters. He also told Titus that he should be teaching what is consistent with, with sound doctrine. Uh, frankly, the idea that you should unhitch from the Old Testament, whatever that means, it's not sound teaching. We're told to test everything and hold fast to what is good. So let's do that and look at a few reasons why we should include the Old Testament in our reading and study. Number one, all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuke, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the person of God may be complete equipped for every good work. At the time this was written, there was only one testament, and Paul says all of it is inspired. It didn't become less inspired or less profitable just because the New Testament was written. Paul, nor any other New Testament writer, ever expressed in any way that what is now known as the Old Testament would become obsolete. In fact, Jesus indicated exactly the opposite, which will be point number two. Jesus said, don't assume that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For I assure you, 
until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all things are accomplished. Well, heaven and earth are still here. <laughs> They've not passed away. So it follows that the law, the law that's found in the Old Testament, still has relevance as far as God is concerned. Uh, number three, without the Old Testament, we wouldn't have context for anything in the New Testament. It, it wouldn't make any sense. We wouldn't know where sin came from and how it affected all creation. We wouldn't have a framework for recognizing that we are incapable of being good enough to earn our way into heaven. In fact, that was part of the whole reason God gave Israel the law to begin with, so that we would have at least a rudimentary understanding of what righteousness looks like. Romans 3.20 says, For no one will be justified in his sight by the works of the law, because the knowledge of sin comes through the law. The Old Testament points to the coming Messiah, Jesus. Without the Old Testament, we would fail to recognize not only why we need a Savior, but we wouldn't have any way of recognizing him when he got here. After meeting Jesus, Philip told Nathaniel, we've found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and so did the prophets, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Jesus said, you pour over the scriptures because you think you have eternal life in them, yet they testify about me. In other words, if you want to know Jesus more, read the Old Testament. And let's add one more. So number four, the New Testament tells us that the Old Testament was written for Christians, for us. For example, Paul, writing to the Corinthian church about parts of Exodus, said, Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction. Uh, first, that's 1 Corinthians 10, 11, I think. Peter wrote that the Old Testament prophets understood that they were not serving themselves, but you. These things have now been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Angels desire to look into these things. There are, there are others, but the point is this. The Old Testament might not have been written to us, but it was definitely written for us. And really, that's true for a lot of the New Testament as well, if you think about it. I mean, a letter from Paul to Timothy or Titus or Philemon wasn't written to us either, but it was written for us. So there are a handful of reasons why the Old Testament is, in fact, relevant for us. So let's end by lo briefly looking at the idea that people don't understand the Old Testament, so why bother reading it? Okay, so on one level, it might be true that there are a lot of things that could be hard to grasp. And you know what? That's okay. One of the gifts that God gave the church is that of teachers. If digging deep into theological nuances isn't your thing, so what? You're still his creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that you should walk in them. Whatever they are, just be sure that you choose your teachers wisely. But there is a ton of the Old Testament that doesn't require any theological knowledge at all. The Psalms, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes don't even need any context to be valuable, though context gives them greater meaning. Uh, some books like Numbers, actually one of my personal favorites, is full of law and doctrine and boring lists of things, but also some deep truths that can change your life. Uh, Genesis not only tells us about creation, sin, the flood, but it also explains things like why we have different languages and nationalities and why that tends to cause conflict. You can see Genesis 11 for that one. Uh, or you might find little things that can give you a new perspective on current events. 
like the promise that Abraham's offspring would be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years in a foreign land, but that in the fourth generation, 400 years, this, his people would return to the land of Canaan. And it would take that long because the iniquity of the Amorites was not yet complete. You know, America isn't even 400 years old. Most of us still have it pretty good here, but God's lack of judgment doesn't mean none is forthcoming. We just have a very narrow view of history. Anyway, here's my personal suggestion. Not a mandate, definitely not something that is required to be godly, but something that I find to be helpful and I think could be valuable to anyone at any level. I suggest that you get yourself a chronological Bible in a version that you find easy to read or, or to listen to and go through scripture in the order things happened with no agenda, no expectation or pressure. Just follow the narrative and, and see if the Old Testament doesn't come a little more alive for you. If real paper is your thing, great. If your phone or tablet is more convenient, there are tons of options. I personally use Olive Tree. Uh, if you, like me, are an audible learner, get an audio Bible or app. I use Dwell and highly recommend Felix or David with no music. That's just me, though. The point is, all of your Bible, including the first 39 books, often referred to as the Old Testament, is important. Definitely don't ignore the first three quarters of your Bible. <laughs>